Man-made climate change is, according to most scientists, happening now. Leading climate experts also agree that nations have to drastically reduce emissions of greenhouse gases released from fossil fuels and need to stop cutting the forests that absorb carbon dioxide. But the world seems to be moving in the opposite direction. The challenge today is how countries can improve living standards without wrecking the planet. In Climate Challenge, we scour the world for promising schemes and new technologies, both global and local, that might make a difference. We got to our present position of affluence through the Industrial Revolution, and that process over 200 years has added 200 gigatons of carbon to the atmosphere, and that carbon is now changing our climate. We need to start working as a, as a species on this, as a world population, um, because that 200 gigatons ultimately has to be removed. If you burn fossil fuel, uh, you get water and carbon dioxide as the end product, and the carbon dioxide is normally released into the atmosphere. And that is the main cause of human-induced climate change. First of all, you can try to prevent CO2 to go into the atmosphere, and that is by using other techniques like renewable energy or nuclear, which do not produce CO2 for producing energy. Uh, another way is energy conservation, the most important. Try to do the same with less energy and causing less CO2. And a third way is try to capture the CO2 from a plant before it's released into the atmosphere. That third way is the focus of this edition of Climate Challenge. We investigate the potential for intercepting carbon dioxide, or CO2, before it enters our atmosphere. It's known as Carbon Capture and Storage, or CCS for short. The technology was developed to help extract oil from the ground. Now it could help cut emissions from fossil fuels. And yet around the world there are just a handful of industrial plants that do capture and lock away the CO2 they generate. In this programme we see CCS in action and ask if putting the CO2 genie back into the bottle should become the rule rather than the exception. Carbon dioxide is an invisible gas. Most of the emissions that you see in this film are in the form of water vapour. It's hardly doable for taking CO2 out of exhaust gases from cars or from each chimney in household. So a large part cannot be captured. Only the biggest point sources, as we call, you can capture. The biggest point sources are fossil fuel power plants, oil refineries, petrochemical and heavy industries such as cement and steel factories. According to the IPCC, the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, for every five tonnes of CO2 belched into our atmosphere, no less than three tonnes comes from these sources. Some of these industries are now cleaning up their act. Inside the Arctic Circle in Norway. This is the most northerly town on the planet. Until now, fishing was Hammerfest's sole activity, but soon it'll be joined by natural gas. On the island of Melkoya in the Barents Sea is the Snervit natural gas plant, producing 6.5 million cubic metres of liquefied natural gas a day. This is one of the first total subsea system where we take the gas resources out from the reservoir and take it in one multi-phase pipeline from the field to shore, 143 kilometres long pipeline, the longest in the world. We also have the world's longest what we call umbilical or control cable, making it possible for us to sit in a control room here at Melkøya and control everything offshore, 143 kilometers away. So also there we take into use a lot of new technology. And the last one, and maybe one of the most important, are our use of a new system for capturing CO2 uh, and a system for injecting that back in the reservoir where it came from. Olaf Karstad is a Norwegian engineer who's been carrying out research for decades into the most effective ways of capturing and using CO2. We are very far from any market here for the natural gas. So we have to liquefy the gas, make it uh, uh, transportable by ship. So what we do is cool down the gas to minus 161 degrees centigrade. Then we 
transported by huge ships to continental Europe as well as to the United States. Uh, this gas contains some CO2 naturally when it comes out of the reservoir. So every LNG plant, liquefied natural gas plant, removes CO2 in this way. Uh, but in most places the CO2 is just vented into the air. In uh, Norway, we'd, we have had very much focus on uh, climate change and uh, CO2 for one and a half decade. Uh, so that goes a long way to explain why we are uh, uh, doing something to the uh, CO2 that we capture here at this plant. Many of the 